Well, good morning, everybody. We're here to talk about the President's uh, latest executive order on the border. By my count, he's issued 94 executive orders since he's been President of the United States. But he's waited until today to actually do what he calls effective action to secure the border. And my question to him is, why did you wait? until now if you were serious about doing it. The simple answer is he's not serious about securing the border. You know, we had some discussion about whether or not new laws were required to be passed. There were some negotiations on a potential border bill that was not successful. But the simple fact of the matter is that the same laws that were in effect back when President Trump was in office are still in effect. But the the difference is the unwillingness of this White House and this administration simply to enforce the law. And you know the numbers, the numbers of people coming across have just been unprecedented, along with the drugs that have come across that have taken the lives of 108,000 Americans, including 71,000 due to fentanyl, the leading cause of death among 18 to 45-year-olds. And then there's the 400,000 unaccompanied children that have been placed with sponsors in the United States and simply lost by the Biden administration. They can't tell you whether these children are going to school, getting the health care they need, whether they're being trafficked for sex or forced into labor as the New York Times investigative piece months ago uh, disclosed. So they simply don't know and frankly they just don't care. And now we read, according to the New York Post, that all the asylum claims that have been stacked up in our immigration courts that the Biden administration sim plans to simply dismiss approximately 350,000 of those cases. So they've opened the front door, and when the room gets too crowded, they open the back door. And uh, it, is, uh, it is a shell game. Um, it is a shell game. They are not serious about it. This is a conversion uh, based on the proximity of the next election and sinking poll numbers. And we think it deserves to be called out for what it is. Senator Grant. Thank you. Sorry to friends in Texas and along the border, we definitely feel your pain. I talked to President Trump this morning, and he says uh, this is a scam and people will see through it. I think he's dead right. If you want the border secured uh, and, you, and you're waiting on this group to do it, you're going to die waiting. So the policy, as I understand it, is going to be an economic boom for the cartels. This is literally some of the best things that could happen for the business of illegal immigration. Because there's going to be a cap where you kind of shut it down every day. So if you're a cartel, you're going to rack and stack them. You're going to find out exactly how many can get through a day. And you say, who would like to pay more to move up to the line? The biggest beneficiary of this policy is going to be drug car uh, uh, human trafficking cartels who will charge more to get in the group that's going to go through, and at the end of the day, you'll have to wait longer and pay more, but you're coming in. And uh, if you want to stop the flow, here's what President Trump said he, he will do on day one. They will keep coming until they see people leaving. He told me this morning, when he gets to be president, not only is he going to secure the border, he's going to deport hundreds of thousands of people here illegally. And if you want to shut down illegal immigration, those coming need to see an outflow by the tens and hundreds of thousands. That will deter. The only policy change that will work is to have mass deportations because people will stop coming when they see people leaving. Senator Kennedy. Okay, I want you to listen up. Here's the, here's the drill. Uh, President Biden is in trouble politically. Um, he's polling right up there with fungal infections. Part of the reason for that is that he gave in to the loon wing of his party, and he dissolved the southern border. Now, five months before an election, 
he has to appear to be willing to do something about it, hence this executive order. And he expects you to uh, report this epiphany that he has had, take what the White House is, uh, is telling you, balance it on your noses like trained seals, and report it uncritically. For, five, for, for, for three years, we have watched President Biden push on a door that has clearly marked, has been clearly marked full. He's mismanaged Congress, COVID, the national debt, the economy, inflation, crime, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, the war in Gaza, the war in Ukraine, and now, of course, the border. And every time, I think the president has hit rock bottom. He has managed to find a shovel and continue to dig. Hence, this executive order. And I think that's what the American people see. The first question I would ask President Biden is this. It's a little late, isn't it, Mr. President? It's a little late. Um, you can't make this cat walk backwards. The president's border policies have allowed 8 million people to come into our country illegally. If you try to come into our country today illegally, you are a sucker. You are a sucker. All you have to do is present yourself at the southern border. Now, for three years, President Biden told us all, there is no crisis at the southern border for reasons clearly stated on the teleprompter. And his plan to deal with the crisis at the border was to pretend that there wasn't a crisis at the border. Some of you reported that. Some of you didn't. Well, when the American people figured it out, because they may be poorer under President Biden, but they're not stupid, the Biden administration shifted strategy. It then said, well, we know there's a crisis at the board, but we don't have any authority to fix it. That didn't work either, because the American people aren't sell deep stupid. So now he has decided to tell you that he has been born again. He has had an epiphany. He is now a border hawk. And that's what he rep wants you to report. Look, you can cut the hypocrisy with a knife. You know, I, I have seen the good side of politics, but I've also seen the dark side. I spent 25 years in the major leagues of Louisiana politics before I was sent down to the minors here in Washington. I have seen the good side, but I've seen the dark side. And this is the most, one of the most cynical things that I have ever seen a politician attempt to do five months before an election. It is insulting. It is cheap. It is contemptuous. And the American people see that. And I, I, hope, uh, I hope you do, too. Ricketts, you're the man. All right. Thank you, John. It has been nearly three years since President Biden put Vice President Harris in charge of addressing the open southern border that we have. And now we have this executive order that President Biden wants us to believe is going to fix this. It just shows how unserious he is about addressing and securing our southern border. President Obama's National Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson, said a thousand people trying to cross the border in a single day was a crisis. This executive order is going to be two and a half times that. President Biden isn't addressing the crisis. He's maintaining a catastrophe. 
since he's been in office, he has allowed all the Trump era policies that worked so successfully to either go away, not enforced, or he's repealed them. In his first 100 days of office, he had issued 94 executive orders. President Trump built 500 miles of wall. President Biden stopped that with his executive order. He stopped deportations. President Trump was doing internal immigration enforcement, going after sanctuary cities. President Biden signed an executive order repealing that. He ended the Remain in Mexico policy. And what do we get when President Biden undoes all President Trump's policies that worked so effectively, that brought illegal border crossings down to a 40-year low? Well, we get nearly 10 million people who've tried to enter our country illegally. We've seen a humanitarian crisis, drug trafficking crisis, sex trafficking, child trafficking, a national security crisis. Last year, 172 people on the terrorist watch list, the FBI terrorist watch list, tried to cross into our country. And those are just the ones we caught. Under President Trump's four years, that number was 14. This president is not serious. He has opened our southern border, and now, because it's election year, he is trying to show the American people that he's taking steps. But we're not going to believe it. If he were serious, he would implement the Trump-era policies that so successfully brought the numbers of illegal people crossing our border down. He is not serious. I am proud here to stand with my Republican colleagues to call on the President to get serious about securing our southern border and protect the American people because he is failing, he is endangering our country, and the American people will not be fooled by this political play. Too little, too late. Mr. President, Joe Biden, this is too little, this is too late, and the American public knows it's too late. This stunt is not going to save your political life. Thanks to you, the 11 million people that have crossed this border illegally, this is now the number one defining issue of this presidential election. I, too, want to say thanks to Senator Cornyn for lead leading this. No one's been impacted more by this in the state of Texas. Why is this important to Kansans? There's three arteries that come out of the state of Texas and go right through my home in Kansas, and then it bifurcates and goes east and west, and consequently, we're seeing record numbers of fentanyl deaths, record amounts of human trafficking, and everything else that goes along with this. Today, I address everybody here with a concerned heart and a deep sense of urgency, you know, concerned for the fact that families don't feel safe anymore in the state of Kansas. For over three years, this administration has treated our national security and sovereignty as mere afterthoughts. Our borders have been left vulnerable and the safety of our, of our citizens compromised. And here we stand just five months before this critical election, with Joe Biden and the Democrats grasping for a political lifeline their recent announcement is nothing more than a desperate ploy to distract from their failures. But let me be once again unequivocal. This is too little, too late. This administration's neglect is a direct affront to every American family who has endured the devastation of fentanyl poisoning and violent crime linked to illegal migration. I suppose we're up to 250,000 Americans, young adults, that have died from fentanyl poisoning under Joe Biden's watch. That's three times more than the number of soldiers we lost in Vietnam. This president's reactions, his steps, are a cruel slap in the face to families like Lake and Riley's and to all families that are mourning loved ones lost to crime or fentanyl poisoning. But make no mistake, the only ones celebrating Joe Biden's so-called solutions are the cartels. These criminal organizations have taken control of our border operations, turning them into a sophisticated enterprise of human trafficking and drug smuggling. This is not about securing our borders. This is about Joe Biden's enabling organized crime. Now, despite their, their claims, the policy represents nothing more than a superficial gesture, allowing 
2,500 illegal aliens to cross the borders between the ports of entry. That's just 2,500 between the ports of entry. That's not counting the number of people that are coming in the, the, through the ports of entry. It's not counting the number of gotaways, uh, known or unknown gotaways. This uh, translates to over a million illegal entries per year under Joe Biden's watch. This isn't just negligence, it's complicity. Joe Biden is not failing to stop this invasion. He's actively facilitating the invasion by ignoring the crisis. He's, um, he's empowering the very criminals who seek to destabilize our nation. Like Senator Ricketts uh, said, let's not forget the words of the Obama Biden DHS Secretary uh, Jay Johnson, who stated in 2009 that 1,000 illegal crossings a day overwhelms the system. So at this 2,500 number, the system will be overwhelmed. And again, we're not going to be able to keep track of the known or unknown gotaways. Joe Biden's decisions are basically rubber stamping the presence of cartel and criminal enterprises at our borders and really throughout the entire nation now. This is not a policy. This is a betrayal of the American people by the White House. It's high time we demand accountability and real solutions to secure borders and protect our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cornyn, for uh, putting together this press conference. And as my colleagues have stated, uh, we have seen a real crisis in the United States. And why? It didn't have to happen. On day one of his presidency, Joe Biden rolled into the White House, he got into the Oval, and he dismantled everything that President, Biden, or President Trump had in place that kept a lid on these illegal border crossings. So now here we are, years later, and it has taken 10 million illegal border crossings for President Biden to step up and acknowledge that there is a crisis at the border. And you know what, folks? It's his own making. He really could have used his authority all along. We all know that. And yet he chose to do absolutely nothing about it. So why is he doing it now? Well, folks, you don't have to be that intelligent to see what's going on. We have an election just a few months away. And this is the number one issue across the United States. In Iowa, it's gone back and forth between the border and inflation, both caused by President Joe Biden. But right now, you ask Iowans, what's the major issue on the horizon? And they will tell you it is our southern border. So Biden halted border wall construction that was underway. Build the border. That's what we saw in the Trump administration. He reinstated catch and release. He's just dumping illegal border crossers into the United States. He has been selling off the materials purchased to build the wall for pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar, taxpayer dollars. And the Democrats have blocked Sarah's law, which is really important to me. Sarah's, Sarah Root was killed by an illegal alien years and years ago. And we have been trying to do something about this, and yet uh, we see Democrats in cahoots with Joe Biden saying, no way, just let these violent illegal illegals go free. And you know what? Again, this is all a stunt. It's a political stunt. You know, there's doublespeak in the White House. We hear it all the time. You know, I'll give you some examples. I have an ironclad commitment to Israel. Oh, but let's support Hamas and the Palestinians in their protests. Um, let's block weapons from going to Israel. Um, let's put sanctions on Iran. Oh, but let's not enforce them. Well, here we have it again. Yet once again, another stunt, another stunt. Oh, let's do an executive order on the border. But, you know, let's make it so it really doesn't do a darn thing. It just helps us get through to November. This is such a, a ridiculous point in time, so much so that over the weekend I had a family gathering, and my mother said, you know, one of our family members that uh, she was talking with, uh, she's a lifelong Democrat. She is a lifelong Democrat, folks. Um, her husband had to write me a campaign check because she didn't want her name associated with a Republican. That's how Democrat she is. And she told my mother, I'm thinking of voting for President Trump. 
I will not cast my vote for President Biden. That's how bad things are, folks. People are seeing through it. Iowans are seeing through it. This is just a joke. Let's do something about the border. And you know what? I think we're going to have to wait until January when President Trump uh, comes back into office to actually see something done about it. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. Thank you for your leadership on this issue. The American people are living the results of this open border. Every town is a border town. Every state is a border state. And it is all because Joe Biden's border policy is an open border. And we have seen that from day one. Just look at the 94 executive actions that he took in his first 100 days. 94 that opened up the border and made legal immigration more difficult and opened the way for illegal immigration. Indeed, you could say that one of the focuses of this administration has been to make illegal legal. Think about it. We have an American president who is choosing to find ways to help people circumvent the rule of law. That is what this administration is doing. And you need look no further than Biden's border policy by the numbers. The 94 executive actions, the 10 million illegal aliens that have crossed into this country, the over 350 known terrorists, 350, that have come to that southern border. Then you have the 350 aliens who entered and were trying to get asylum, and their cases are dismissed. They are free to stay. 350,000. Start to add up these numbers. Look at what it gives you. It gives you the number one issue with the American people, which is the open southern border. It is the 108,000 drug deaths from last year, people that are dying of fentanyl. It is the gangs that are in our communities that have never seen a gang, the crime that is in our streets, the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, the numbers are adding up. And here you go with an election year political gimmick to try to push this issue aside so that he can go to a debate and say, well, I did something. You're right. He did do something. He did it on day one by dismantling a secure border that President Trump had handed over to him and turning it into an open border where we do not know who is coming into the country or the reason that they are coming into the country. I'd like to thank Senator Cruz for uh, co-hosting this and invite him to take the podium, and then we'll close it out with Senator Hogan. Joe Biden, the Democrats have presided over a criminal invasion of the United States of America. We are facing the worst illegal immigration our nation has ever seen. 11 million illegal immigrants have come in, invited by the Democrats. When Joe Biden came into office, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. All he had to do was nothing. Just sit there and stare at the wall. But instead, he deliberately broke the system. This chart on the right shows when Biden came into office, you had historic lows the instant he was sworn in, the numbers skyrocketed. It went from the lowest rate in 45 years to today the highest rate in the history of our nation. This is deliberate. Now today, President Biden and the Democrats have a press conference. And here's what they're announcing. He could have stopped this every single day of his presidency. When he signs this executive order, the only question anyone should ask is, why didn't you do this in 2021? Why didn't you do this in 2022? Why didn't you do this in 2023? Why didn't you do this last month or the month before or the month before? How many dead bodies is enough? 
You want to understand the consequences, take a look at the two police officers in New York who were shot this week by an illegal alien that Joe Biden and the Democrats released. The assailant, Bernardo Raul Castro Mata, is a name really out of Charles Dickens. Mata is Spanish for he kills. His middle name is a communist murdering dictator. And what happened? He came illegally from Venezuela. He came to John and my home state of Texas. He came to Eagle Pass. We had him apprehended. And what did he do? He did what Joe Biden and the Democrats have done for three and a half years. He let him go. He let him go. And Mr. Mata went to New York City and shot two New York cops this week. That's happening every single week. We have not had a week go by when someone is not shot, someone is not murdered, a child is not raped by an illegal immigrant released by Joe Biden and the Democrats. Now, understand what is going on here. This is election year politics. And by the way, we've seen this game before. Apparently, the Democrats have one playbook, which is create a crisis, and then a couple of months before the election, do something very mild to address the crisis and say, see, problem solved. We saw this with gas prices. Right before the last election, gas prices had doubled. People were hurting. And what did he do? Right before the election, he releases oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Gas prices fell a little bit. And they victory lap that they've reduced gas prices a tiny bit from the massive historic highs they've had. We also saw this on student loans. Last election, right before the election, what does Joe Biden do? He says, I'm giving away a trillion dollars to young people. By the way, young people, come vote for Democrats now. Now, he knew he was lying to them. He knew what he was doing was illegal. He knew the Supreme Court would strike it down, and of course it did. This is the same game. What they are announcing is they're going to issue an executive order that normalizes illegal immigration at 4,000 people a day. 4,000 people a day is 1.5 million a year. And understand on this chart, I'm actually going to pull this chart over here because what they're doing is unusually cynical. He came in here. The numbers skyrocketed here. 4,000 a day is 120,000. So we're right here. He's proposing to lower it to right here, to lower it just a bit, and then to play the same game he played on gas prices. Say, look at the great victory. And by the way, if God forbid Joe Biden is reelected, the number will go from 120 back up to here, because this is what they want. The Democrats want that criminal invasion. And the police officers being shot, the young women being murdered, the children being raped, they're unwilling to stand up and protect them. It's immoral, it's wrong, and what the White House is doing today is they're just p playing a political game. Well, let's do the math. Open border, closed border. You come into office. President Biden comes into office. 70 executive orders on the border and immigration. 10 plus million people come in legally across our border. Now, five months before the election, he's going to issue an order, an executive order, that's supposedly going to secure the border. Except it doesn't. Check it out. I mean, it doesn't even begin until you have more than a million people coming here illegally on top of the million that come legally. So do the math. What's this really about? How can you argue the actual numbers? Look at the numbers. Furthermore, how is this going to secure the board? He's got all these exceptions, and he refuses to enforce remain in Mexico or third safe country or build the border wall. So this is just more talk for the campaign. Five months, five months before the campaign, he comes out with one executive order after issuing 70 throughout his administration, allowing more than 10 million plus people in here, 169 on the terrorist watch list. And you heard what Senator Cruz just said about the recent shooting of two policemen in New York City from an illegal immigrant who was in custody and was released. How bad does it have to get? How bad does it have to get before we look through the campaign rhetoric and lip service and secure this border? And it's this simple. It's this simple. All President Biden has to do is enforce the law. Enforce the law. Enforce the law. 
Third safe country, remain in Mexico. Now, you do that, and maybe we can have a serious discussion about this administration doing something other than continue to promote open borders so that he can get elected and run that spigot wide open again. Mr. Gordon, I mean, timing aside, are you happy with some of the contents of this executive order? Is this a step in the right direction, albeit, you know, a late one? No. It's a fig leaf. He has absolutely no intention of actually enforcing any of this. If he did, he would have done enforced the law, as we've heard time and time again, uh, at the beginning of his administration, rather than piecemeal dismantle through all these executive orders you've heard about, the existing border security protection. So um, this is not an improvement. This is a fig leaf, and I think the American people are not going to be fooled. Yes, ma'am. Out of curiosity, you've obviously worked with the Democrats before on a number of issues, um, including trying to negotiate something on the border. Did you hear anything from the Biden administration? Did they ask for any input ahead of this executive order today? Well, you know, passing legislation is hard. And sometimes it takes a long, concerted effort. But the Biden administration basically is not engaged at all. Um, they claim that they, a single negotiation that occurred a few months ago was supposed to be some panacea. The problem is, if they aren't enforcing current law, why? what gives you any confidence they will enforce any new laws? And that's another reason why I think this uh, executive order is just uh, political cover and the American people aren't going to be fooled. Jeff, why don't you take the question? Yeah. Um, you criticized this move as a political play. Um, how would you respond to the administration's assertion that the rejection of the Senate border deal in February was a political play by Republicans? It's totally false. The, um, the, the Democrats' border legislation was terrible. The Democrats' border legislation that Chuck Schumer put forward was actually designed, it was the same thing as this, this executive order. It was political camouflage. Understand what this Democrat legislation did. It would have codified, it would have put into federal law Joe Biden's catch and release, the practice when they apprehend an illegal immigrant, they let him go. By the way, it means Mr. Mata, who just shot two police officers, under the Democrat legislation, he would have been released, he would have been in New York, he would have shot those two cops. It puts into law that illegal immigrants, when they're released, automatically get a work permit. So it ends up benefiting illegal immigrants and attracting even more. It puts into law that many illegal immigrants get a taxpayer-funded attorney. Not only that, that legislation also put into law billions of dollars for the NGOs that are actively facilitating the criminal invasion of this country, working with the cartels. And on top of that, it normalized 5,000 illegal immigrants a day. That is 1.8 million a year. And Chuck Schumer's fake immigration bill would have had 1.8 million illegal immigrants every year in perpetuity forever. Schumer at the outset said he was not willing to secure the border. He was not willing to agree to anything that actually secured the border. And the entire purpose of that bill was so Democrats could do. Look, Joe Biden is going to claim, gosh, we had the Schumer bill. But mean President Trump didn't like it. And so that's why the criminal invasion happened. Except if you look at the chart, the criminal invasion didn't happen two months ago. It happened in January 2021. What happened in January 2021? Joe Biden put his hand on the Bible and lied to the American people when he said he would faithfully execute the laws of this country. He hasn't done that. This is all about politics. Yeah. Senator, in all fairness, I mean, it's also Senator Langford's border bill. I mean, are, was it a mistake politically for Senator Langford to sit down with Democrats and try and hash something out? All right, go ahead. Uh, before the, the let me let me tell you what happened. But before the uh, the foreign aid bill, Republicans in the Senate said, "Look, we would like to use this as an opportunity to try to secure the border." It's clear that President Biden is not going to do it on his own. Senator McConnell appointed Senator Lankford, a good man, to negotiate. 
some sort of border security package. James was negotiating with two people, Chuck Schumer and Chris Murphy, both of whom, each of whom, believes passionately in open borders. Those negotiations were held in private. Maybe my colleagues knew what the terms uh, were being discussed, what terms were being discussed, but I didn't. In fact, I continuously cautioned our caucus, we need to know more about what we're doing here. And there was a concern about leaks, I get that. And there was a concern that it would make the Democrats mad if we all knew what was going on. And it took months. I'm not, I'm, I'm not criticizing James. Let me say it again. He's, he's negotiating with two, really three people, if you include President Biden, four if you include the Secretary of Homeland Security, all of whom believe in open borders. Um, finally, they reveal the bill. And most, not all, but most Senate Republicans said, no, this won't do the job. And we're not going to vote for it. Now, that's what happened. And, and you can pretty it up all you want to. And the president can, can spend the day play acting and issuing an executive order and saying, I'm having to do this because Republicans refuse to act. But what I just told you is actually, it's actually what happened. Let me add something just real simple to that. President Biden is for open borders. President Biden wants open borders. The evidence is there. It's right in front of you. So he is not going to agree to any legislation, nor will he issue an executive order to close the border. He can close the border right now. All he has to do is enforce existing law. It's as plain as the nose in your face. He wants open borders, and he won't agree to anything that actually secures the border. Let me give you an example. Can, can I? Go ahead. One thing I would add to that, if you were interested in border security, then Durbin and Schumer would have taken up H.R. 2, which H.R. 2 arrived in the U.S. Senate on May 15, 2023. Now, at Homeland Security Committee, at Judiciary Committee, we've had a lot of meetings. We've repeatedly asked, why don't we take up H.R. 2? If they didn't like H.R. 2, they could have amended H.R. 2. But they chose never to take up the issue of securing the border. What they did choose to do was say, let's deal with the aftermath of an open border and pass something that doesn't address the root cause. They had their shot. They chose not to take it. Donald Trump left them a secure border. There are the numbers on Ted's chart. They chose never to take an action that would keep those numbers low, and then they chose not to take up H.R. 2 that would give them a remedy. Good. No, the White House won't agree to anything. So, so understand, Marsha just made a very important point on H.R. 2. The House passed strong legislation that would have secured the border, H.R. 2. It was designed to secure the border. In the Senate, I introduced H.R. 2 in the Senate. Twice I forced a vote on the Senate floor in H.R. 2. Twice every single Democrat voted no. Now, the press very meekly reported what Chuck Schumer said, which is H.R. 2 is, is dead in the Senate. Why? Because it's designed to work. H.R. 2 is designed to lower the numbers back to where they were when Biden came into office. It's designed to secure the border. So Schumer was right. H.R. 2 was dead in the Senate. Why? Because the Democrats want this border invasion. That is the outcome they want. So you can't negotiate. Now, I will say this. I'm going to make a prediction. In the next five months, we're going to see a very modest decrease in illegal immigration. Why? Because Joe Biden controls it. He caused this. The Democrats want this invasion. So the next five months, you're going to see the numbers go down slightly. So then they can say, see, we solved the problem. It's a lie. They know it's a lie. And if, God forbid, they win in November, the numbers will skyrocket again and more people will die. Go ahead. Last question.
running for re-election. There's a lot of polling, maybe not in Texas, but in other states where Democratic incumbents are polling better than Joe Biden. That maybe they're they're not facing the blowback that you think they should. I'm wondering, you know, you've gone to a lot of states, a lot of other senators are trying to elect a Republican Senate. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on how uh, on the messaging for Republicans to get across in in states that aren't on the border, you know, states like Michigan or states like Ohio. Well, I can tell you in Texas, the invasion at our southern border is the number one issue in the state of Texas, and I believe it is compelling across the country. Now, you're right. Democrat senators, when they go home, there are a lot of senators that go home that pretend they're not crazy, that pretend they're actually moderate, middle of the road. It's an absolute lie. On this issue, every single Democrat, all of them, have voted for this over and over and over again. H.R. 2, they had the opportunity. Do you want to secure the border? Every Democrat voted no. John Tester, he goes back to Montana, says, it's terrible what's happening at the border. And then he votes against securing the border. Bob Casey goes back to Pennsylvania, says, oh, we got to do something about illegal immigration. And then he votes against securing the border. Every single Democrat, every one of them. I forced to vote a couple of years ago on Kate's Law. All right, you want to talk about common sense legislation? Kate's Law polls at about 90%. Why is that? Because it's named after Kate Steinle, beautiful young woman in California, murdered on a California pier by an illegal immigrant who had been released over and over and over again through the revolving door of Democrats letting violent criminals go. Kate's law says that anyone who enters the country repeatedly illegally with an aggravated felony will face a mandatory minimum prison sentence. In any room in America, in the bluest state in America, if you ask people, they say, yeah, Kate's law makes perfect sense. I forced a vote on the Senate floor. Every single Democrat voted no on Kate's law. So the challenge is, frankly, our friends in the media who are here, repeat the adjective, when you discuss John Tester, you call him the moderate Democrat. He's not a moderate Democrat. Every single time he's voted in favor of this invasion. And there is a disconnect because every Democrat goes home and pretends they don't want this problem to happen, but they all want it. And the reason is they look at that invasion and they see future Democrat voters. This is all about power. This is the most cynical decision I've ever seen. Listen. Every one of us here has been down to the border multiple times. I'll tell you, when you look in the eyes of a little girl or a little boy who's been brutalized, who's been abused by human traffickers, when you see women who've been repeatedly raped, it's evil. And every Democrat votes in favor. Thank you, guys.